If you use Crossfire and you use Betaflight, then you are going to love today's video. You know how you have to use one of your aux channels to get RSSI or LQ into the OSD? Doesn't that stink? Don't you hate the fact that you have to pick either RSSI or LQ? You can't have them both in your OSD. Betaflight 4.1 is about to change all that. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today we're going to have a little adventure of exploration because I have heard about this feature, but I haven't actually tested it myself. We're just going to go try it and either it'll work or it won't work. And if it doesn't work, I won't release this video. <laughs> I've heard that Betaflight 4.1 lets you put LQ and RSSI into the OSD. It reads those values directly from Crossfire Telemetry. You don't have to give up an aux channel to do it. And before we test this, I have to acknowledge Brain FPV, the Brain FPV Radix, they built this into their custom build of Betaflight some time ago, and they've had it for a while. And I only say that because I know if I spend the whole video being so proud that Betaflight has done it, and I don't mention that they did it first, then I'm going to get some annoying messages from Jennifer Minas. So full credit to Brain FPV for doing it first. You guys rock. Let's see if Betaflight has finally caught up. <clears throat> And in order to make this work, what I'm hearing is it's it's completely simple. Number one, be running Betaflight 4.1, obviously. In the configuration tab, make sure that RSSI ADC is off, which if you're using an aux channel to get your RSSI into the flight controller, you've already done. But just in case, double check it. And then in the receiver tab, we are going to set the RSSI channel to disabled and save. Then we're going to go to the OSD tab and we should have an option for link quality. There it is, an option for link quality. And we've got an option for, oh, RSSI value and RSSI DBM. Well, let's just turn them all on and let's just see what we get. Everything takes 500 times longer than you think it ought to. All I'm going to do is just demonstrate this stupid shit. Why the fuck? Is it not working? Crossfire ports tab. Why is serial? What the fuck? Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Okay, there is a receiver in here. It's red. Why is it? Oh, because the damn radio is turned off. We green now? How about now? Ho! Oh, hallelujah. All right, here we go. We're going to turn the radio on. Let's do it. And, oh, ha, ha, yes, RSSI and LQ. That's pretty freaking cool. That's pretty freaking cool. That is really freaking cool. I'm super psyched to be able to see both RSSI and LQ and to see RSSI and DBM instead of percent, which as a kind of an RF guy speaks to me a little bit better. I like DB. I like decibels. In case you're not clear already rssi is the raw signal strength and lq is the link well link quality you knew that it, it you could have like low signal strength but still have a solid link as long as there's not too much background interference or you can have a strong rssi and a lot of interference so your lq can be bad so rssi is useful to know but lq is in some ways like a better thing for determining the safety the, the, the health of your link but it's great to have them both. If you've got a high RSSI, but a low LQ, that tells you that you've got a lot of interference. The other thing about LQ is, LQ, you're gonna see it at 300%. Crossfire has two modes, 150 Hertz sampling, which is the low latency, fast, awesome mode, and 50 Hertz, which is the higher latency mode. When the signal gets weaker, it drops to 50 Hertz. And that's what you're going to see at, at longer distances. Now that you can put LQ in the OSD, you can actually keep track of how some, people don't really know. A lot of people don't know. They're like, oh, Crossfire has low latency. But you could be in 50 Hertz mode and maybe you wouldn't notice. Well, now you'll notice because you'll see when the LQ goes below 100%, you're in 50 Hertz. When the LQ is between 100 and 300%, you're at 150 Hertz. So that's nice to know. That's going to do it for this video. I thought this was going to be an easy one to bang out, but I had to, I had to find a quadcopter that had 
both Betaflight OSD and Crossfire, and just by sheer luck, my all of my only quad, quadcopters I have with <laughs> with Crossfire in them right now have either Byte Frost or DJI. I have a bunch of quadcopters with analog. They would just either have free sky receivers or they were broken and their camera, their video wasn't working. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have Crossfire, don't hesitate. Do this now. Betaflight 4.1 is awesome. There's so many reasons to switch to it. I, I, I sound like I'm selling it. I'm not, no incentive. It's just really good and I really like it. Happy flying.